In early 1981, a former Israeli soldier named Yossi Ginsberg traveled to Bolivia, South America. His adventurous nature brought him to that place to look for a new adventure. While traveling by ship, Yossi met a guy named Marcus Stam, a schoolteacher that barely missed the ship. As fellow adventurers, they became friends in no time and decided to go on adventure together. They then went to a camping area and set up a tent there. While walking around the market area, Marcus met an old friend named Kevin, a successful climber and photographer that had successfully climbed every mountain in South America. On the other hand, Yossi also met a woman. They get acquainted. They enjoyed the night together and spent the rest sleeping together in the tent. The next day, Yossi, Marcus, and Kevin went to La Paz, a city in Bolivia. They rented lodging there. After that, Yossi went walking around in the market when he suddenly met someone from Austria Jose was greeted by a foreigner from Austria named Carl. They immediately got acquainted. Carl then shared his story when he found the local tribes of the Amazon. He went panning for gold in the river and enjoyed the beauty of the Amazon rainforest. He even showed Yossi some photos of him during his expedition. He then invited Yossi to an expedition to discover the Toromana tribe, a tribe that had hidden treasures. He was intrigued by the story and invited his friends to come with him. They were only charged $50 each for the trip and were promised a block of gold to take home by Carl. After supplies preparation was complete, Yossi and his friends, guided by Carl, departed by plane to reach the starting point of their expedition. Arriving at the destination, they immediately started their journey into the deep and thick Amazon rainforest. They were thrilled about the things they would find. After a long walk, they decided to rest and set up a camp in the night. After setting up their camp, Carl told them about the primitive tribe that he used to meet on his last journey. Three days had passed since the start of their journey. Marcus started getting tired and wounds on his feet, slowing down their pace and getting them separated from Carl. Desperate, he shouted Carl's name and made Kevin annoyed. Carl! Stop! They almost fight when something moved from behind the bush. Turned out it was just a local resident herding his cattle. They then continued walking and finally met up with Carl again. Shortly after they arrived at Asarayamas, a hamlet. They spent the rest of the day there, got acquainted with the local residents, and even got to try the local tobacco cigar and wine. The next day, on the fourth day, after Marcus treated his wounds, they continued their journey. They stopped by the river bank and panned for gold. They then crossed the river and saw a monkey. Carl suddenly took his gun and shot the monkey dead. He brought it and made it their meal for the night. Carl looked enjoyed eating the catch while the others doubted the taste and looked nauseous. On their fifth day, Marcus's condition was getting weaker which cost them a lot more time for resting than walking. Marcus realized and regretted his condition that slowed them down but it was impossible for him to be able to return back alone. The next morning, they discussed the way for Marcus to keep walking without slowing their pace. They agreed to make a raft and waded through the river to continue their journey. You must work as a team. The trip through the river was initially amazing until they arrived in the rapids. Afraid they couldn't manage to get through it, Carl decided to lead the team to get to the riverbank. Meanwhile, Yossi, Kevin, and Marcus panicked and couldn't follow Carl's guide. After the tension passed and they managed to get to the riverbank, Carl was so mad at them that he decided to leave them to hunt inside the forest. Shortly after, Yossi went to the forest too to find Carl. But suddenly, Carl showed up and shot something in the bush near Yossi. Turned out, since they entered the forest, a jaguar was lurking beneath the bush, waiting to hunt them. They finally returned to the riverbank. The tension between Kevin and Carl hadn't been sighted yet so they decided to part ways. Carl and Marcus went through the thick forest while Kevin and Yossi waded the river again. Before parting ways, Carl warned Yossi not to wade through a place called Malpaso San Pedro, a canyon with a fast current that apparently, nobody had ever made through it. They parted ways that day. Kevin and Yossi set off along the river while Carl and Marcus entered the forest again. That was the last moment Marcus and Carl were seen. Since that day, both of them had never made it out of the forest. Long story short, Kevin and Yossi finally made it to the San Pedro Canyon. Just as Carl said before, the current was fast and too dangerous for anything to pass through. Unfortunately, it was too late for them. They already entered the current and couldn't control their raft. Lucky for them, Despite losing their raft and almost drowning, they stuck into a rock and managed to hold into it to save their lives. Kevin told Yossi that he would try to swim to the bank and find a way to save Yossi. He told Yossi to toss the machete so that they could cut some vines and made a rope to save Yossi. Somehow, Kevin made it to the bank, 
but unlucky for Yossi, he was drifted away by the strong current. Once again, he was stuck to a rock. He tried his best to swim to the bank and managed to get away from the current. He then tried to call for Kevin but no one answered him. He kept calling but until the evening, he still couldn't any sign of Kevin. On the sixth day, Yossi decided to continue his journey. He was tired and hungry. His condition began losing his energy. Thankfully, he found some fruits, but when he climbed the tree, a snake surprised him from the tree trunk. He didn't give up. He climbed back up, killed the snake, and managed to get the fruits. That night, he made a shelter out of branches and leaves. When he began to sleep, he hallucinated that he was in a restaurant. He had some food with him and tried to eat it, but suddenly, he woke up. In the morning, Yossi continued his journey to find the way out. Suddenly, he realized that there was a lump in his forehead and something moving inside of it, but he shrugged it off and kept moving. Long story short, that night, Yossi took a rest but suddenly, he was surprised by Marcus who stood in front of him. He immediately took his flashlight, but when he turned it on, Marcus suddenly disappeared. He then realized that something was moving between the bushes. He saw a tiger and immediately took a gas canister to make a fire to scare off the tiger. Thankfully, the tiger didn't attack and he was safe. He rested the whole night and woke up the next morning feeling discomfort in his forehead. He decided to operate it and found a leech-like animal inside the lump in his forehead. Yossi continued his journey. He found a slash mark on a tree and two almost hatched eggs nearby. Realizing that his food supplies had run out, he ate them raw. He then continued walking. Shortly after, he found a remnant of a shelter made out of dry leaves but couldn't find anything useful there. He checked his map to make sure where he was and where to go. His condition got worse. The moisture in his foot started causing wounds but he had no other choice but to keep walking. Yossi decided to return to the riverbank so he wouldn't get lost, while in another place, Kevin was still alive and was rescued by local residents who then took him to Rarenabak. He then immediately asked the local authorities to help him find Yossi who was still lost in the Amazon. In another place, Yossi faintly heard the sound of the plane. Turned out, it was Kevin who looked for him. Yossi gave a signal by waving his coat, but Kevin didn't see him because the plane flew too high. Couldn't find Yossi from the air, finally, Kevin was directed to use the services of a local fisherman to look for Yossi. After hearing that Yossi was missing for more than two weeks, the fisherman refused to help him but Kevin kept on convincing him. He even offered to rent the boat, which ended up convincing the fisherman to help him out. Yossi had lost his hope. He lost his chance to be saved by the plane. He was then surprised to see a woman, a local resident of the Amazon who was crying. She looked scared of Yossi but in the end, they became friends, even without understanding each other's language. They walked together through the forest. Yossi didn't believe his eyes in the beginning. He even checked if the woman he found was real or not. The next day, they started finding their way to Rarenabak. Yossi had difficulty walking and had to use a stick to support his body. Yossi began arguing with the woman because he was depressed about his condition and the fact that he couldn't get out of the forest. That night, they slept together. Yossi tried to calm the woman by stroking her. Suddenly, Yossi started hallucinating. His condition was so concerning. The next day, Yossi continued walking. His hallucination got worse. He couldn't even differentiate reality from hallucination. Unfortunately, when passing through the forest, he fell into quicksand. His body slowly began to drown until he was tired and fell asleep. When he woke up, Yossi saw a branch above his head. He tried to grab it and slowly pulled himself out of the quicksand with the last of his strength. Thankfully, he managed to get out of the quicksand. He was very tired and hungry. He wanted to give up but suddenly, he heard a faint whisper, saying that he had to go to the river bank so he could be found. Believing in the whisper since he had no more hope, Yossi crawled towards a tree full of fire ants. He then opened his shirt and shook the tree so the ants would sting him. He did that to alter his fatigue by pain. That made him walk as hard as he could toward the river bank, but when he got to the river, he didn't find anything. He had lost all of his energy and couldn't do anything but lie down. At night, a turtle approached him. He then spoke to the turtle to motivate himself. He had given up his hope to be rescued and just waited for his time. The next day, Kevin, who was still looking for Yossi through the river was stopped by the strong current. He didn't have any choice but to turn around, but suddenly, Yossi woke up and saw Kevin right in front of him. Yossi crawled toward Kevin. He couldn't even scream and call him. Kevin almost left that place when he suddenly turned his head. 
He saw Yossi standing in front of him and rushed back to rescue him. He pulled over to the bank and immediately hugged Yossi. Yossi was very weak and couldn't walk anymore. Finally, Kevin took him to Rorena back. The local residents congratulated them for being able to survive in the forest for more than two weeks. After their condition improved, Yossi and Kevin went back to their lodge in La Paz. They waited for Carl and Marcus for days, but they never made it home. There was no information about them. They realized that the most valuable treasure is their own life. 